All right, so now we're thinking about all these x's and things together. I want us to take a look at some expressions that are really important and that occur in all sorts of walks of life, whether it's financial stuff or natural stuff or just understanding how the world works. These are really super important expressions that are going to lead to super important functions, and they're all called polynomials. And they're not that hard. Isn't that great? Something that important, that valuable, and it's not that bad. I want to start off by talking about what's called a monomial. Now, this is just one little clump of a thing where you could have a number, which we call a coefficient, multiplied by a bunch of variables together. And those variables can be raised to powers, but those powers have to be whole number powers. So the exponents on the variables have to be 0, 1, 2, 3, and so forth. No fractions in the exponent and no negative numbers in the exponent. And if you have a thing that looks like that, it's called a monomial. Mon for like one, mono, like hand, mono. Now, a polynomial is just a sum or difference of monomials. So you kind of string them together and you get a polynomial. And that's what polynomials are. So polynomials are near, uh, merely things that look like, you know, 2x cubed plus 7x minus 3. That's an example of a polynomial expression. And so what I want to take a look at are some uh, basic ideas here. One idea we could think about is how do you find the degree the degree of a polynomial. Well, to find the degree of the polynomial, you look at the monomials, and you find the absolute highest degree that occurs in the monomials, and then that is the uh, degree of the polynomial. So how do you find the degree of a monomial? Let's take a look at some examples, and I'll show you exactly how. So here's um, a, a polynomial. And notice there's only one term here, 5 times uh, m cubed, which means that this is actually an example of a monomial. It's a very special polynomial, just one term. There's no other terms. So all you do is you look at that, and you look at the exponent. And that exponent represents the degree. So this person right here has degree 3, has degree 3. Don't be fooled by 5. 5 is an example of a coefficient. But the degree is going to be the highest power that we see. In this case, there's only one power we see, and that is 3. Let's take a look at another example together. C, we got here. Here, this is a polynomial that's just z. So it's just one unknown. The coefficient is an invisible one. And what is the exponent? Well, the exponent here is actually also an invisible one. So this has degree 1. It's a first degree polynomial because the exponent on this monomial, there's only one term, is in fact 1. Cool. All right. One of the one? Let's, that's another one. They're kind of fun. Negative 3. Now, this seems a little tricky. Negative 3 because, you see, there's no unknown. So what does it mean to, to have an exponent on no unknown? Well, if you don't see an unknown there, what does that mean? Well, it's there. It's just invisible. It's an invisible 1. So if I write negative 3 as negative 3 times x to a power, the power I'd have to write is 0, because x to the 0 equals 1. And so now we've identified this particular polynomial, which is really a monomial. And the highest exponent we see on a variable is, in fact, 0. So this has degree 0. And in general, if you have any constant, any number, and you view that as a monomial, the degree of any constant is always 0. So that's kind of cool. That's a cool little fun fact. Share with family and friends. All right, now look at this one. Now this is crazy. Negative x to the fourth times y. Here I've got two variables running around. So how do I deal with two variables running around? It's still a monomial because there's only one term there. I'm not adding or subtracting any other terms. Just one clump of them. But in fact, I have two I have two variables. In this case, what we do is we take a look at all the exponents on the variables, and we add them together, and that sum represents the degree. So in this case, I see that I've got a 4 as the exponent on the x, and I've got a 1, invisible 1, on the exponent on the y. And I add those together, and I get 5. This has degree 5. This has degree 5. Little tricky, little tricky, but we got it. 
Let's take a look at another example. Whoa! Now this one has a lot of terms. This is no longer a monomial. This is actually a genuine polynomial. It has this monomial together with this monomial together with this monomial. Now, to find the degree of a polynomial, I find the degree of each monomial, which you see how we've done, and take the highest number. So here, this thing, I see an x squared, so the degree of this uh, monomial is 2. The degree of this monomial is 3. That's the, that's the power on the unknown. And what's the degree of this? It's a constant, so the degree, remember, is 0. So I've got a 0 degree monomial, a second degree monomial, and a third degree monomial. I pick the biggest one, which is 3, and this is an example of a third degree polynomial. Third degree polynomial. These are great. And let's see what else I've got here. I think I'm running out of questions here. I think you've done them all. I've got one last one. One last one. 7p plus p to the sixth. What's the degree? Now, some people might say, gee, the biggest number I see is 7, so the answer is 7. But remember, that's a coefficient. That's a constant that's multiplying an unknown. To find the degree, we're always searching for exponents. So don't be fooled by that large number in front. You want to look at the exponent on the unknown, which in this case is an invisible 1, and in this case is a very, very visible and large 6. So what's the bigger of the two, 1 and 6? It's plainly 6. And so in this case, we, this has degree 6, degree 6. OK, I think you're getting the hang of these degree stuff. I want to show you some other little nomenclature, other little words that we use. That's kind of fun, because everyone speaks the language, everyone talks the talk, and now it's time to walk the polynomial walk. The first notion that we want to talk about is writing a polynomial in standard form. All that means is we're going to order all the monomials in your polynomial such that the highest degree comes first, followed by the next highest degree, followed by the next highest degree, followed by the next, and lower and lower and lower until we're done. So we order the monomials in terms of degrees of the monomials. So that's why it was important we figured out the degrees. And the leading coefficient of a polynomial is that constant number that's multiplying the very, very first monomial when it's written in standard form. So it's that that, that get coefficient in front. So uh, here are some kind of uh, vocab words that are kind of fun to think about. If we have a constant polynomial, we've already seen that that has degree 0. We talked about that already. That has degree 0 because it's, it's a constant times x to the 0 power. If we have a linear polynomial, that means that it has something just x to the first power and no more. So this has degree 1. A quadratic polynomial, quad means 2, so what it means is that the highest degree we see here is a 2. Cubic, you guessed it, has degree 3. Quartic has degree 4. These are kind of fun words, aren't they? And then quintic, whoo, could you imagine such a thing? It has degree 5. And there are other words, but after, after round 5, we just say it's a polynomial having degree 17. And there's no crazy special word for it, even though there is, but we don't use them quite often. So anyway, that's kind of fun, a little vocab thing there. Then the other thing to talk about is how many terms there are. Not the degree, but how many uh, monomials we have that comprise the particular polynomial. So for example, a monomial, we know how many terms there are. Just that one clump. So this has one terms. So not one terms. It should just say one term. But of course, if we said that, Oh, and someone took my white out. Now, you know, I hate when people take my white out without asking because that just makes me very mad. And a mad Professor Berger is like a mad professor. You don't want to mess with a mad Professor Berger. There we go. One term. OK, a binomial, bi means two, it means that these, there are two terms. There's something plus something else, monomial plus monomial. It's brother against brother. So this has two terms. A trinomial, like a tricycle, will have three terms. So uh, a clump plus or minus a clump plus or minus another clump. And a polynomial is just can have any terms at all. So that's a, the more general, generic word, poly, for many, many nomials. And that's where that word's come from, in fact. So there's lots of vocabulary words, and it's all great fun. And so let's actually have some fun trying to consider these vocab words with, in fact, some specific examples. So let's take a look at 7z squared minus z cubed. And let's first write it in standard form. Now you know what that means. That means I have to write the monomials from the highest 
uh, power down to the lowest degree, the highest degree to the lowest degree. So it would seem, now I'm going to write something that's wrong. So get ready. It would seem that this is the highest degree, the 3. So I write z cubed. And then I move the 7. So I have uh, minus 7z squared. Now, why is that totally wrong? Well, it was a good attempt to put the z cubed here. But I have to write the entire monomial, including that negative. So in fact, the way to visualize this is to think about an invisible plus sign right there. Boop, boop. So it's 7z squared plus negative z cubed. So this is totally wrong. I should put in here a negative z cubed, and then I have a positive 7z squared. This is now correct. I like this. This is now good. What's the leading coefficient? Well, now that it's written in standard form, I look at the coefficient on the highest term, which in this case, z cubed. What's the coefficient? It's a negative 1. So we have a negative 1 here. What's the degree of this? It's the highest uh, d power we see, which is a 3. And what's the name of this thing? There are two terms. So this is actually a binomial. So this is a binomial. So there we have it. OK, let's try another one together. Because now you're getting it. Now you're getting it. 4 plus n squared minus 5n. Write it in standard form. So I'm going to put the highest degree uh, monomial first, which is going to be this n squared. Then the next one is going to be this, this term, which is a linear term, which is n to the first power, so minus 5n. And then this has degree 0, so plus 4 goes at the very, very end. Now they're now in order of degree size, from largest to smallest. Um, leading coefficient. Great answer is there's no coefficient, so I'll put 0. That's wrong. If there's a number n squared here, in front of it, there's always an invisible 1. Don't forget the invisible 1. That's the leading coefficient in this example. The degree of this is the highest degree, which is 2. And there are three terms here. This is a trinomial, a trinomial. So this is awesome. Let's do one last one, and that is it. Then I'm cutting you off. 2 minus y plus y cubed plus 5 y to the fourth. Standard form, we write the largest degree term first, which is this one. So 5 y to the fourth, because that has a fourth. The next uh, largest uh, exponent is a 3, so that's plus y cubed. The next one is this a linear term, y to the first, which is a minus y, and then the constant term plus 2. So there it is in standard form. Leading coefficient, we just read it off it. It's a 5. The degree of this is 4. And how many terms are there? 1, 2, 3, 4. So this is a quartic, a quartic polynomial. So lots of interesting things here to think about. These are very, very fundamental, very cool uh, expressions.